All right, thank y'all so much for joining us here today. Uh, this concert kind of was, we've been planning this actually since about the beginning of the school year. And uh, I spoke to Mr. Cleveland about what I wanted to do this year to kind of improve myself and improve the band program. And this is one of the things that I thought about in, in part giving back and making our students learn some more in-depth things about the music that we're, that we're going to perform for you here today. Uh, it's called an Around the World Concert. Uh, I've never done anything like this before. I've never done a concert where we've had stuff going on in the background throughout it. So there may be a snafu or two today, so just be patient with us as we get through those things. But um, we're picking a piece from every continent that has a history of music in it, so everything but Antarctica. And each one of the pieces that we picked deals with a different aspect of how music is created or made for our band, as you see here before us. So the first song you're gonna hear, American River Songs, is about landscapes, and the composer used landscapes as his inspiration. The second song, Australian Up, is a choral piece that he transcribed or rewrote for contraband. And there's a lot of music out there like that. We're gonna play a piece from South America, and you're gonna see someone actually doing the tango on stage while we perform the piece. So each piece we have deals with a different aspect of how music is created and shared with the world. So um, the kids are going to be doing most of the speaking because uh, they're the ones who've done the research and everything. And that means it's time to start. Wait for us. Um, so we're going to start with American River Songs. If that group will come on up and get ready to present. Songs and music has been around for a while. It was first used in the Romantic era of music, and that was about 1780 to 1910. Um, some themes that they use when using landscapes and folk songs and music is the surrender to nature, fascination with the past, and seeing spiritual experiences. Some composers who first started doing this were uh, Beethoven, uh, Gaunod, and Stephen Foster. Next. Um, so, three that you probably uh, Three that are around today are um, American Landscape, America the Beautiful, and Zion. Yes. And so the American River Songs has three folk songs in it, uh, Down the River, Shenandoah, and the Glendy Burke, and you can hear Cassie sing some selections from each. Next. The river is out, the channel is deep, the wind is steady and strong. Oh, won't we have a jolly good time as we go sailing along? Oh, Shenandoah, I long to see you. Can't stay here, but it works too hard. I'm bound to leave this town. I'll take my doves and tote them on me back when the Glendy Bird comes down.
Hi, my name is Kendall Reimer, and this is Clay Wilt, and the next piece you'll hear is Scenes from the Louvre. And a little bit of information about Scenes from the Louvre, if I can get my flashcards in order, is, well first, Quaid, why don't you talk about the music? Alright, Scenes from the Louvre is based off Renaissance music. It uses different meters, dynamics, and articulations to express each theme. We have three movements that we're going to play today. Each one has a different style and different sound to it, especially instrumentation and dynamics. Next, please. Okay, a little bit about the Louvre itself is it was created in the 12th century, and in the Middle Ages it was a fortress for military purposes. It was a royal residency after that, and it was sporadically home to royalty, it would go abandoned for years and years at a time. After the French Revolution, it became the home to one of the most extensive art collections in the world. Okay. All right. The Renaissance is, it means rebirth, and it was from the 1400s to the 1600s. And Renaissance music was the first type of music to use bass lines, and instrumental music, like what you're going to hear, was primarily for dance. Scenes from the Louvre was originally composed for a TV documentary about the Louvre the building, and it's not based on any art, but it is based off of Renaissance music. You'll be hearing three of five movements today, and the first movement is called Children's Gallery, and I chose to use Madonna and Child and Two Angels as the painting to portray this piece. It was really difficult to find a piece for this movement, though, because typically children were not presented as very childlike. They were typically infants and asleep in their mother's arms. The next movement you'll hear is called Nativity Paintings, and I have two paintings up here. The one on the right is your typical Renaissance-style portrait or picture of Jesus after he is born with Mother Mary and Joseph. And the second one is also painted during the Renaissance time, but it doesn't portray a very Renaissance style of art. And you can see Joseph hurriedly bringing in people to see his newborn child as Mary gazes at Jesus in awe. And the final movement that you'll hear is called the Kings of France, and I chose to use a portrait of the first king of France, Francis I. Thank you.
Thank you. 
He has taught in every grade level, kindergarten through college. He has won many outstanding awards for his compositions. He's a fan of composing emotional pieces of music, including fantasy on a Japanese folk song. The folk song used in this piece is called A Name I'm Going to Butcher, Sen Tsunayama. Tsunayama. <laughs> it is very it's a very melancholy song about the passing of time around the landforms in Japan, like the mountains and the entire island itself. The theme of the folk song appears multiple times in the song. Listen and see if you can find it. You will hear that this piece uses a pentatonic scale. A pentatonic scale is one that uses five notes per octave instead of seven, which you're used to. Um, it's a scale commonly used in many cultures like Celtic, German, Nordic, Nordic excuse me, West African, Greek, and of course, the cultures of many Asian countries. As you listen, you will hear that Samuel R. Hazo's piece, Fantasy on a Japanese Folk Song, is not so much a musical composition as a story of love and loss. Throughout this piece, Hazo uses many different recurring rhythms and patterns to tell the story of a girl whose heart is torn between her American lover and her beloved Japanese culture. The tune of the traditional Japanese folk song, Tsunayama, is woven into other melodies to symbolize her cherished culture. A recurring brass melody is used to represent her American lover. At the end of every essential moment in the story, a single set of four eighth notes is used to signify the girl's tears. At the moments in which her conflict is at its greatest, the taiko drum and the timpani can be heard playing alternating heartbeat patterns to show that the girl's heart is divided between her love and her culture. We're going to do our best to keep the storyline going on the screen as we go through this. The best thing I've all been doing a lot of things at once. So I don't
Aiden Williams, this is Roy Hensley, and Jason Philby. The next piece we'll be playing is African Dreams. The composer of this piece, Brad Kerr, is currently director of bands at Northern. In this piece, he tells the tale of William Mwamba, a Malawian innovator and engineer, who powered his village with a window in the strong and led by second parts when he was only four. Kerr tells the story using characteristics of African music such as call and response and conflict percussion. Africa is a huge continent. Landmass larger than the United States, China, Japan, India, the UK, and all of Eastern Europe combined. There are over a thousand languages spoken across the 50 countries that make up Africa and the cultures that make up Africa are incredibly diverse. However, some things do connect them, such as the use of music in everything from religious ceremonies to civic gatherings. Music in Africa is characterized by its use of call and response, complex rhythms, and the staggering amount of percussion instruments. African music uses many types of percussion and music. Some of which we use in this piece, some examples being the bottles and the Jum Jum drum. This piece also uses call and response between different sections of the band. Call and response is traditionally used in settings as diverse as burial rites to celebratory dances and is an important aspect of African music. We hope you will enjoy African music.